previously the three judge panel from the Court of Appeals um, failed to uphold Duluth's position and affirm the band's position that they don't have to make future payments, um, and they sent guidance back to the district court, who had previously ruled that um, the band should pay the payments it withheld from 2009 to 2011. This put us in conflict with our regulatory agency, the National Indian Gaming Commission, who has actually forbidden um, any more payments to the city of Duluth. So we appealed that part of the ruling, and the judge at that time in the district court said that she couldn't make a retroactive um, decision. The Court of Appeals remanded the decision back to her, um, saying yes, she could actually consider retroactive payments. Um, so that decision is yet to um, be decided. The city decided to ask the um, Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals if they would hear it en banc um, or, by the full, or by a full panel. And those cases have to be accepted by the Circuit Court of Appeals. The ruling yesterday closed that avenue for the city of Duluth. Um, the circuit um, said that they denied the request of the city um, to be heard by the full panel. Um, so the next steps, um, one, are to go back to district court about those back payments. Um, and then the city has to decide whether it wants to continue litigation. At this point, the next step would be the Supreme Court of the United States. And since the uh, district, so the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals has uh, decided or denied the uh, city's appeal to uh, hear the case, it, it almost seems, I don't want to say like an almost impossible feat for the city to uh, have that occur, but how do you get that ruling against you and then go, I mean, it, I know it's legally there, but uh, the chances of the U.S. Supreme Court hearing this case would be very slim in my opinion. Well, the district court has ruled in favor of the band. You've had the Circuit Court of Appeals rule unanimously from a three-judge panel in favor of the band. Um, the full Circuit Court of Appeals denied rehearing it. And generally, the Supreme Court um, hears cases that have national implications. Um, and this is really a contract dispute. Um, so it seems unlikely, but that doesn't mean that um, the city is barred from trying. No, I understand. And uh, a few weeks ago when the uh, ruling came down from the three-judge panel at the Court of Appeals level, uh, the, the city of Duluth, uh, I'll, I'll say their city attorney and as well as the mayor, making statements regarding the band's refusal to talk with the city regarding a settlement. And uh, what do you have to say about that? Short of calling them outright liars, um, the band has actually never had a conversation that's been initiated by the city of Duluth. Um, we actually had um, an arbitration with a third-party arbitrator come in. He actually um, closed the arbitration because the city was unwilling to put an offer on the table that would be compliant with the National Indian um, Gaming Commission's ruling or the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act. Even after all of that, um, the band reached out to the mayor and sat down and tried to do some kind of global settlement talks. And at that time, we offered the city a payment um, to pay for services in the city of Duluth, um, carry our own water, so to speak. That offer was firmly rejected by the mayor. He said the only thing he would settle for is a future stream of revenue. And unfortunately, that is not compliant with the National Indian Gaming Commission or the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act. And... At that time, you know, the band said, you know, you need to put something reasonable on table that the regulatory agency will approve because they have oversight. And he said, we'll see you in court. So the band has not been unwilling to talk. The city has been in, unable to accept what their circumstances are and have reasonable expectations about what they could expect. I'd be curious to know a business the size, just the square footage, the size of the Fond du Lup Casino, what businesses of that size in downtown Duluth would pay. Let's just call it property taxes, because I know a sovereign nation entity isn't able to pay those taxes, but... Well, less than $10,000, I would expect. Well, certainly far less than 5 or $6 million a year. Far less. Far less. Um, you know, the part of the 
difficulty in all of this is also the mayor's continuing misunderstanding around federal Indian law and this rhetoric around implications for other Indian gaming facilities and their relationships. We all have the same laws that we have to follow, Indian Gaming Regulatory Act, and we have the same agency that regulates it, the National Indian Gaming Commission. They have oversight. It is their job to make sure things are consistent and within the law. So he continues to have a gross misunderstanding of federal Indian law and the regulations that um, are in place here and tries to implicate the band and um, have it go further than a contract dispute between the band and the city. And to me, that's no more than hate mongering. Um, he is trying to stir up uh, misinformation and his rhetoric is inflammatory um, against tribal nations and their enterprises. And frankly, I understand his disappointment, but he needs a reality check. And this, now we have to, well, I guess with the ruling that, that goes back, it's remanded to Judge Nelson at the district court level, um, is there any kind of timetable that you foresee as far as res resolution of this, as far as the, uh, the payout of the, the money that's been in escrow for a few years now? I really don't have a timetable. I would expect that um, submissions to the court would take place sometime in the next 90 days. Um, you know, we'll be talking with a legal counsel about preparation for that. Um, certainly Judge Nelson is familiar with our arguments, um, so I don't know if she'll actually have a hearing on it or not. Um, but hopefully we'll know more about that in, within 90 days. Okay, so again, the only uh, avenue the uh, city of Duluth can take at this point would be the U.S. Supreme Court. And uh, I know uh, reading some of the uh, comments since the last decision was uh, rendered, ruling was rendered a few weeks ago, again, that misunderstanding that uh, there's a federal agency that oversees Indian gaming and uh, the ban has been accused in so many words, I don't want to say it exactly like that, but accused of kind of having one on their side, so to speak, and that being the NIGC as far as ruling on this whole, this whole matter as well as the hate mongering, it's very disturbing to read these comments. You know, it might be a worthy exercise for people who are interested to actually go to the National Indian Gaming Commission's website. Um, their rulings are sometimes against tribes themselves, sometimes against contractors that they do business with. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is this is a highly regulated industry and the band will run its business in compliance with those regulations. And that's what this whole matter comes down to, is whether or not we are compliant with federal law. I understand, uh, as we wait for that ruling to come down. Is there anything else you'd like to add regarding the entire process as this thing has gone on since, I believe, 2009? You know, I, I think that the you know overriding feeling of um, the Reservation Business Committee is just that, you know, it's looking forward to a time when it can put this behind us, focus on our business enterprise, you know, perhaps give Fond du Luth a much needed facelift, um, continue to partner with other businesses in downtown Duluth the way we have been. Um, we've partnered with some restaurants. Um, we're in discussions with, you know, the North Shore about using that venue. Um, would love to have the, add the Sheraton to the mix. Um, you know, we're prepared to be a good partner um, in downtown Duluth. Um, we just like to not have to fight in order to do it. I understand. Well, thank you so much for your time, Chairwoman Diver, and I'm sure this will be discussed tonight at the State of the Band address as, as well. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. You're listening to 89.1 WGCS Cloquet.